All right, let's talk about some lead reverb. Here we go. I'm going to turn that on. And let me slide over to my reverb. This right here is my lead reverb FX Sin. I like to stay organized, so yellow are my buses. Green is my all vox, where all vocals are going. And if you're going to use an all vox bus, I talk about this in my Sins and Buses tutorial and tracks. You need to ensure that you're, if you're sending all these buses to an all vox bus, you need to ensure that your FX sends, depending on how you're using them, are also being sent to the AllVox bus. Because usually they're going to be sent to the main, and then just know that as you move the AllVox, if you're going to do some automation, you're going to start to mess with your reverb send amounts, even though you don't know this is happening, and it's going to start adjusting those. So just do that, okay? If you're totally lost when it comes to routing and what a send is, go watch my sends, tracks, and buses tutorial. Link is inside of the description because you might not understand what's going on here right now. But for those that have watched it, let's move on. So I'm going to add the send to that over there. So I'm sending it here, and this is what I got going on. So first up on my reverb for my lead vocal, as you notice, I have one for my hook also, a whole separate reverb. But for this one, I got the Q2. I usually do a lot of my bass management and removal, removal of the lower frequencies that I don't need to be sending to the reverb, so I'll place that before my reverb. And then I got the Lexicon PCM Vintage Plate. I'll go ahead and just let you see these, uh, what I got settings. You can pause this at any time. However, I'm going to tell you right now that yours aren't going to be typically this. This is what I chose. Now, you could use this and get away, but you got to understand reverb is very special. It is treated and mixed with everything else in mind, okay? The reverb that I'm using for my lead vocal is probably a reverb I chose to match maybe something on the snare or some kind of else that fits within the scheme of the mix. For background vocals, I may want to mix with a different type of reverb, and I'm going to talk about that right now while talking about some of the parameters really shortly and briefly So, because I could talk about, let's say, pre-delay for a whole hour. All right, so pre-delay is basically a delay within the plugin that delays the onset of the early reflections and reverb compared to the sound source. So the sound source being my vocal with a zero millisecond pre-delay, that means that immediately when, my, when I say something or my vocal comes in, it's going to immediately have reverb on it. Let's check that out. So I got my reverb dialed in. Let's bring out my reverb. Slide that over here. Wonder where your life at. What you wit? As you see. Right when I say something, your life there's reverb on it. If I set it to one second, that means that the reverb is not going to come in until a second later. Watch. Wonder where your life at. What you went through. Wait. All right, so let's do a little bit less dramatic one. In 546 milliseconds, the reverb is going to kick in. Wonder where your life at. What you, you know, why would you want to do that? Some kind of special effect or something like that. I'm not going to get into that. I could think of some uses, but let's talk about a low pre-delay compared to a little bit more of a pre-delay. What's that going to do and how can that affect my mixing? It can affect, affect it immensely. For something that I want to push to the back of a mix, I'm going to use a short pre-delay time because I want the reverb to envelope it immediately. For something that I want to seem more forward in the mix, I'm going to use a later pre-delay. And here's why. Picture me sitting right now in this chair and then you are four feet from me. To the sides of us are walls that are like 10 feet away, right? Well, when I talk to you and I say something, you're going to hear my voice first, and then you're going to hear the sound bounce off the walls and come to you. That would be a short pre-delay. That means that we are delaying the reverb. First, you're going to hear my voice, and then later on, after a pre-delay, you're going to hear the reverb come in. So what does that mean? That means I'm close to you. I'm right in front of you. You're hearing my direct signal from my voice first. Now, if I was to go deeper into the room and be further away from you, you're going to hear my voice immediately along with, almost immediately, along with the reverb that's bouncing off the wall. So as my voice is coming towards you, it probably bounced off the floor, the, the walls, and the ceiling and is also arriving at your ear around the same time as my direct voice that is the way that you need to think of pre-delay um, try not to be too technical and trying to simplify it for you so again short pre-delay will make it seem like you're deeper in a room and or further back and a longer pre-delay time can make the voice seem more forward now another thing you need to think about is Vocals, like rap vocals and stuff like that, if you set a pre-delay too short, it can wash out the sound because the, the reverb is immediately on the vocal and it creates a washed out sound, all right? 
Now, if you give it more pre-delay, you're allowing more of each vocal phrase to come out a little bit sooner before the reverb kicks in. And it's all subjective to the ear also. So that's basically a pre-delay. I chose a 43 millisecond because that is half of my beats per minute. I usually tailor it to my beats per minute. My beats per minute is 86 millis milliseconds. 86 beats per minute. So I went half of that for my milliseconds. The reverb time. Depending on the type of vocal, your reverb time can also affect how far or distant or how close something sounds. But you need to take that even all these settings come into play in context with everything else, plus in context with the how much you're sending. So mixing is a very big balancing act that you need to be able to use your ears for, all right? But let's just talk about reverb time. Reverb time is basically how long, I'm not going to get technical and talk about RT60 times, all right? Because that's over some of your heads. But basically, how long the reverb is going to last before it dies out, okay? So the reverb's there, and then it dies out. Watch this. I'm going to have basically no reverb time. I'll use a short pre-delay so we can demonstrate. Wonder where your life at, what you went through. All you're hearing is basically it sounds like some early reflections, sounds from the, the sounds you're getting directly from the walls next to you. Wonder where your life at. It's adding some life, but it, if I just dial in this amount, Wonder where your life. you can barely hear it. Wonder where your life at, what you went through. All right. So the longer your reverb time, watch what happens to the reverb, it takes longer to die out. It'll probably be there for a long Wonder time. Where Still there, buddy. You are in a cave. And there are aliens in the cave, so they need to freaking run now. Okay, so that's what's happening. So they should be running. Wonder where your life. All right. So when would you? What? Why would you want to use a certain reverb time over another? Well, again, that's going to be in context with everything else. But if it's a real busy rap vocal, you're typically not going to want to use a very long reverb time above one one second. And this is all subjective, okay? This isn't etched in stone. What I'm telling you is that you got so many words and syllables coming in as you're rapping, you know what I'm saying? That if you add a long reverb time, it's basically, there's just going to be like no type of uh, emptiness. It's just going to be all oh, this big old room and it's just going to be this washed out sound. So I typically use just for, I want some, um, basically some liveliness. I'm just adding some liveliness, but you also need to ensure that you also tailor your early reflection level. Um, that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. That's a whole reverb tutorial talking about early reflections. But you need to also listen to your early reflections. You can turn them off. Some people just use the reverb only. Wonder where your life at, what you went through. Wonder where your life at, what you went through. Wake up, everybody, you've been made a fool. And you may not hear it, but I can hear the early reflections being brought in. And you can really hear it more typical of longer reverbs. Wonder where your life at, what you went through. Wake up, everybody, you've been made... Some people, and I probably shouldn't be getting into this, some people will use the reverb right here, they'll layer their reverbs. I might use just the late reflections, Right here, you see the late and early. I might just use the late reflections of this reverb and use the early reflections of another reverb that allows me to only use the early reflect because I like the early reflections that this reverb puts out. Some I may not even want to use the reverb at all. I just want to use early reflections only to create a sense of space around the vocal. And again, this gets into even more in-depth stuff of using short delays for reverb. So I thank you guys. I talk about this on the DVD, but if you want to go research it, just type in Google using delay as reverb. You know, a lot of hip-hop tracks, stuff like that, where they don't want a lot of reverb sound, they use just delay or they use early reflections or they use another function in order to basically add a reverb. So there's reverb that I'm using on the vocal for the lead vocal. Now, when it comes to vocal reverb, you need to ensure the most important thing you need to know is you need to be doing it in context with the instrumental. Sure, you can set some reverb parameters, and I do listen to the vocals alone with the reverb to basically do some of the basic EQing, but I've also listened to the instrumental and I know what I'm going for. So I'll just jump over to another vocals. Man, it's a gamble. All right, so it's gonna sound like a lot of reverb, but check this out. When you listen to it in context with the instrumental, you're gonna see that a lot of the reverb seems to go away. So I'm gonna play it without the instrumental, and then as I bring the instrumental in, you'll see that it might seem like there's a lot of reverb, but then again, it goes away when the instrumental's on, and then once I take the instrumental away and hear the vocals only, you get to hear like there's a lot of reverb. 
Man, it's a gamble. Do I hold the pieces? Land of the scandal. Coldness increases. Hand on the candle. Hopeless is the season. Stand with the handle. Home of the decision. So as you can see, you need to ensure that you also listen with the instrumental because if you were just to do this like this, you'd be like, you know what? That sounds way too reverberant. That's too much reverb on the lead vocals. I'm going to bring it down here. But then when you bring your instrumental in, you're going to sound like there's no reverb at all because it's getting drowned out. So there's another quick tip for the basically reverb and how you want to be setting your reverb. All right, so that concludes this video. However, there's other videos in the series. I'm going to be making a whole bunch of them. And the reason why is because I'm getting messages saying, Dozer, your tutorials are like an hour long, and I forget where I'm at, so i got to write it down, and I might have to go somewhere. So I'm trying to shorten them. This one was still kind of long because I chose to cover, like, compression EQ and de inside of it with some reverb. Uh, next up is I'm going to have them numbered. And again, in the description, there's going to be a link to the playlist. So next up is vocal thickness, how to add thickness using compression and some other secret stuff that you see over here on this thickness bus. I'm going to cover that. We're also going to get into some other things like I still got to cover some of the other elements of the vocals. For instance, you know about the lead vocal. I'm going to mute those. Let's check out these stress overdubs. Lay back. Blast it. I'm using a different attack a different eq i'm using a different compressor with attack and release characteristics that are different for pushing these to the back of the mix i'm using a different reverb or a different reverb amount and i'm using a different reverb and compression and stuff on these repeats right here they bypass me yeah me so we'll cover those inside of another tutorial called background vocals and then there's going to be other ones coming and at the end of each one of those videos i'll tell you where to go next